What's up, dudes? Max here. So, yeah, over the past week, we got a ridiculous amount of news and information about Street Fighter VI. Also, uh, personally got some hands-on time. I spent a lot of it, obviously, with Ken because it was, you know, easily one of the biggest surprises of last week. And also, uh, a little bit of time with some of the other characters, enough for at least uh, a little bit of impressions, and especially an idea of kind of, like, where the game's going, because we finally have more characters in the roster that are playable, um, that we have an idea of how they play, that aren't just Luke, Chun, Jamie, and Ryu. And it was getting a little rough to see those four characters over and over and over again. And it kind of felt like the game was essentially, like, kind of limited as a result of it. But that's just the thing, we're only exposed to so much, and now that we literally doubled the playable roster, um, with what was available over the past week, things are starting to look pretty bright and uh, where Street Fighter 6 is going. That's kind of what I want to talk about. But first, let's talk about the characters and overall impressions of the other characters that aren't Ken because I spent like 15 minutes talking and gushing about Ken and all the different versions he's had before and why I'm really looking forward to this one. Let's first talk about Kimberly because of all the other characters that were playable in this build, I feel like Kimberly, I'm just naturally inclined to and very interested in her playstyle and her design. Granted, she looks amazing. I'm very, very much down with what they're doing with her design and the fact that she's continuing the Bushin Ryu style. But weirdly enough, she uh, isn't just like a guy clone, right? She isn't just Bushin Ryu style with one character. She's not exactly Zeku either. Um, weirdly enough, she feels like a mixture of Guy and, like, Maki. And she does have some of those interesting, like, run sort of mix-ups that Maki sort of had in Capcom vs. SNK2. And that's a very obscure character. Like, not a lot of people are going to know who Maki even is. That there was, yes, another playable Bushin Ryu, uh, like, female Street Fighter character uh, in CBS2. And she's really cool. She's not super great in the game. She's kind of hard to use. But there is, a, like, some shades of that playstyle in there, which I think is just a wonderful little reference. I think of all the characters that are in the roster right now, maybe com competing with Jamie, uh, Kimberly has like the biggest move list. Between special attacks, between command normals, between um, her target combos. And her target combos aren't that crazy. They are very reminiscent of guys' target combos in like Street Fighter 4 and the Alpha games and stuff like that. Uh, but there's just a lot of variation in between. There's a lot of things that can modify what she does and how things act with like paint cans. She has a resource. She also gets like a buff that happens when her level three takes place that gives her attack and movement increases. Like there's just so much juice on this character. And I think that's another thing that I can sort of echo throughout a lot of the roster that if there's one concern from previous Street Fighter games, they were sort of like limiting what those characters could do at the start of Street Fighter V to sort of siphon in what makes the core of that character. And that is the complete polar opposite in Street Fighter VI. And we've already seen that with the Dalsam, Honda, and Blanca trailer that, yeah, they're just giving these characters tools and abilities that they've never really had before. And Kimberly feels like, yeah, the most equipped crazy version of Bushin Ryu next to Zeku. And I, I, I think Zeku is a very cool character. That transformation thing is actually super awesome. And it's one of the characters that I think is one of the most fascinating and unique in Street Fighter V. So the nice part is that they're they're pretty much committing to like the guy play style with Kimberly, and she is easily going to be probably the next character I play in the open beta and figure out how she plays and put a bit more time into her uh, once that beta starts up. So very much interested. The other character that I played a little bit more than the last one uh, is probably Guile. And the first thing I was curious about with Guile was... Uh, how does all this crazy Sonic Boom stuff actually work? And I was giving some impressions of this character because, once again, he does have a lot of stuff. He has, like, you know, the boom that he throws in front of him, which was related to Street Fighter V abilities that he had. And that's that's a fireball motion. I think it was, like, fireball back punch. He doesn't even need to charge that. But he also gets new target combos that make it easier to technically uh, combo into Sonic Booms or combo into uh, Flash Kicks, which is a nice consideration. Guile, does, Guile has had target combos before, but it's just cool to see even more stuff now. Uh, is this going to be the crazy, like, juiced combo -y Guile from Street Fighter V. It's kind of hard to say, and it's kind of hard to say where Guile's playstyle is going to eventually fit in in a game that has um, a parry button, but we'll see over time. Uh, as of right now, those Sonic Booms and the perfect Sonic Booms, which is what I was the most curious about, are not that hard to do. So when I, I think it was the first five Sonic Booms I threw, 
Uh, he said perfect every single time, meaning I got the perfect Sonic Boom, the, the Just Frame version. And then I actively had to, like, think about doing the, the button input the slowest I possibly could, and then, wow, there's the regular Sonic Boom. So funny enough, if you just do, like, a fast input for Sonic Boom and just press the attack button right after, you get the perfect input for it. But you kind of got to put a little bit more brain power into slowing it down in order to get the regular Sonic Boom. And as I was playing him a little bit, I started realizing, oh, that's intentional. They they want you to potentially really keep in control which Sonic Boom you're going to throw out. I don't think you always want to get the perfect Sonic Boom with Guile because Guile has some of the slowest projectiles in Street Fighter, right? This, this light Sonic Boom, you will want the slow version sometimes and not the perfect version, you know what I mean? So there's definitely going to be a uh, approach and situations in offense that Guile will set up for that you're going to have to distinctly get the execution of doing the perfect version or the slow version. And if you just get a little bit too, you know, quick on the inputs, you might get the wrong one uh, or you might intentionally get the fast one when you wanted the slow one. So that's that's pretty fascinating. Uh, that was not what I was expecting to me. When you saw that trailer, you were expecting Guile to throw Sonic booms and you were going to get perfect, perfect. But you wanted the perfect one every single time. I don't think that's going to eventually be the case when people start playing this character it felt very intentional that oh yeah maybe the slow one sets up for some crazy setups or maybe the slow one sets up for even more combo opportunities because you know you can just walk behind that shit so i think Guile looks great um i'm really happy with his new design i think in game these characters look absolutely amazing and guile's just this brick shit house he's the easily the beefiest craziest looking character in the whole game um, but I, I would say he was the second most interesting and engaging, and the final one is Jury, only because I had put so little time into Jury in Street Fighter 4, and the very little bit of time I had in Street Fighter 5. But from what I could tell, uh, they just tried to find a nice balance of what she had in 4 and 5 from, you know, the basic gameplay that I'm showing on screen right now, which isn't even mine. It's been probably a mix between CPU and other people that were using Jury at the event. But, um, yeah, from what I was playing against her, and I can tell you from fighting against her that her projectiles are pretty good, man. She can she can very well uh, walk behind that uh, low, I don't know if it was called Fuha or something, but the low projectile she has where she shoots it across the ground. Man, that thing lasts a lot longer than I was expecting it to, and she almost treats it like a sonic boom in some situations and sort of walks behind it for pressure. And it, you'd be like, oh, then just parry it. That actually doesn't work very well. If you um, have a parry animation that has a bunch of recovery and you parry the slow fireball and they're walking behind it that's a free throw setup right you're not gonna be able to parry and then immediately attack after because you don't get the fancy perfect parry animation against projectiles so i think slow projectiles um might end up being very good because they just give some characters uh, an approach on offense and the parry button isn't exactly you know a complete projectile nullification in those situations they will, uh, they, there will be moments where you'll have to make a choice. Is this a good time to make a parry? Is this a good time to project, uh, to, to, to reflect the fireball, to parry a fireball? Is this a good opportunity to do any of that shit? Because the result is that you're put in a punish counter state and punish counter states are the name of the game. If I was to talk about other general impressions about Street Fighter VI, um, yes, it was the fact that punish counters are really the name of the game. Um, it is the underlying feature that is going to be the defining element that is Street Fighter VI. And you would think it's the parry, and we'll talk about the parry a little bit in the future, and I made a quick video on the perfect parry and why it's, you know, not as good as we thought it kind of was, and that's intentional. Uh, punish counter really is unique because it does not act like a counter hit situation like you've seen in, you know, Street Fighter V with crush counter and stuff like that. It does not directly act like a, you know, preemptive attack counter. It is everything. Like, everything you do has a risk to it, technically. Every attack you throw out puts you at a disadvantage of punish counter. And what is punish counter essentially set up for? It's counter hit like situations where all your attacks, if they land, pretty much set up for unique combo opportunities. They set up for unique juggle situations. They set up for all of this stuff that is kind of like everything you do is crush counterable in, in a way, but you don't just get the big crush counter animation. You still get that sometimes from some big heavy attacks, but there's different, there's different types to it. Like every single thing you do when you punish somebody from a light attack to a medium attack or any buttons or even any specials is going to give you extra frame advantage and extra like unique stun states 
that will uh, set up for some really cool confirms and some crazy combo opportunities and a lot of situations that we're not going to be familiar with immediately from like the open beta there's going to be setups there's going to be unique combos there's going to be uh like green shit combos that you're going to be doing as a result of it that will be 100 percent like different and you will we will figure out optimizations for that for quite some time which is neat that's kind of really exciting is that you know there is this inherent risk reward to the whole game but it is not a game that's like you know street fighter 5 which was obviously a uh obviously a strike throw fighting game most street fighter games kind of are in this situation um it definitely is right there's inherently more defensive options in street fighter 6 so if you didn't like like the 50 50 ish okie uh like the wake up situation in street fighter 5 or like the rock paper scissors element the game kind of presented at most situations where you really had to make a, a really hard read and what your opponent's going to do um, that isn't exactly going away, but you are getting more options in Street Fighter VI defensively because of the parry. And we, we talked about uh, the parry itself, you know, being a wake-up, seemingly like frame one thing you can do on wake-up. That that really changes stuff. I highly recommend you check out our, our parry video where it's like, our parry's bad, and it talks about the perfect parry, and specifically why there's such crazy damage mitigation that happens after. But I think inherently parries are kind of weak, right? Um, and the more I have played a different build of the game from the old build to this one, yeah, parries aren't godlike, right? And that, I don't think they should be either. That's Street Fighter 3, you know, that, that is, that's what makes Third Strike, Third Strike. They will have their place, and they absolutely will have utilization, even in high-level matches, even though they might not be as frequently used as you might hope. But they will be there, and they will turn the tide of some matches, and they will be the optimal way to defend in some situations where it seems very hard to deal with cross-ups and things like that. Now that I've played the game more, you can really think of the parry as a Mortal Kombat block button. And it acts very similar, except it's more powerful. And the parry essentially gives you the ability to not worry about high or low mix up, right? So the parry will work through high or low mix. But the, the challenging thing of the parry, it's not just you do it and it, you know, here's the result and it's amazing and you just punish. That's not the case. The difficult thing about the parry is that you need to know when your opponent's going to stop attacking because there is a recovery animation. There's like anywhere between 15 to like 18 frames of a recoverable parry animation that you have to exit in order to attack your opponent. You don't just you don't, you don't just attack willy-nilly right out of a parry unless it's the perfect parry animation and then you get, you know, obviously scaled damage. So, and that's a big part of Mortal Kombat, especially like Mortal Kombat 11 and even MKX to a degree. You need to know like when the pressure from your opponent stops so that you can immediately let go of the block button and then apply your punish or apply your pressure and take your turn. And that's gonna be a big thing, you know, to make the parry, uh, to eventually figure out how good the parry is. And I definitely felt that throughout this session of playing Street Fighter VI, that the parry is a, a sort of specifically designed not to be, you know, godlike. It's not gonna be the overall, like, you know, one of the best options in situations where there's going to be, you know, likely option select parries or all this crazy third strike tech. I really wouldn't worry about that too much. It's gonna be very good in some very specific situations where it will be hard to defend. But like everything else in Street Fighter 6, there's a heavy risk and heavy reward associated with a lot of the game. For all the stuff you're seeing right now where damage seems pretty low, you know, where it's like, oh man, characters just aren't doing a lot of damage in combos. That is only that way because there are so many systems on subsystems, on counter states, on, you know, punish counter states that exist in Street Fighter 6 so much more than previous Street Fighter games that it's going to take a while to figure out what's good. So that is exciting. I'm actually very much looking forward to the open beta when this game comes out to figure out what other people find and then just start applying things that are the discoveries of how the game works because people are going to figure it out quick. There's going to be more people playing Street Fighter, you know, than there has been in a very long time when that beta happens and when the game launches. And it's just a very exciting time because most of the characters in the game genuinely fascinate me, um, at least even pre-launch. And the fact that one of those characters is Ken, and Ken is as interesting and fun, you know, as I was having with him, and I feel like I barely scratched the surface, I don't think I could ask for more. So, relatively positive impressions, right? This game could absolutely crash and burn in its beta. The beta could be just absolutely balls awful, and, you know, nothing functions, and the netcode is absolute garbage. You know, that could be the case. 
but from the couple of play sessions that I've had, it's set up for moments where my initial my initial impressions were not super great when I first played the game, and then I started figuring out the mechanics a bit more, and it got a bit better, and then you find more people using the mechanics, and then it gets really good, and now we're in situations where, you know, several other people that I was playing with and producers and stuff did have a better understanding of the game, and that's where I really start to enjoy it, you know? To start feeling the game out and where and how people are playing it. And uh, as much as playing CPUs and seeing CPU level 8s go at it and see what they do is really cool. Man, like executing some dope shit on like a counter hit situation or making some sick read and getting a good parry. That's that primo Street Fighter shit. And it's, uh, yeah, it works out pretty good in this game. Anyway, I'll be back with more impressions of stuff very soon. Uh, I'm going to be gone for a few days. So we got some Street Fighter 6 videos primed. I got direct player matches. So if you guys are looking forward to uh, not CPU matches, but like actually fighting and figuring stuff out where I'm mostly playing Ken throughout those, those will be going up. And I'll also have some CPU matches because we tend to see new things every single time these videos go up. Justin also had stuff that he put up recently of CPU matches that have some really, really fascinating things. So I got uh, a solid like 30 minutes of that that'll be coming up very soon so stay tuned guys appreciate the subscriptions appreciate any feedback you got on the video as well as any thumbs up i usually don't ask for that kind of stuff but yes it absolutely does help out the channel a metric ton and uh my street fighter 5 videos have been doing great and i have you guys all to thank for it so we got an exciting couple weeks coming up the beta is going to be happening i can't wait to cover it my name is max and i'll see you guys next time